Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. How do you like the new decor? <laughs> Whole new studio. <laughs> what if we talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> how you feel and how you think when you have broken up? Like you think that uh, I can't live without her. Or, ladies, I can't live without him. Whatever the relationship is. So let's let me just address one type of relationship. Just since this channel is basically geared toward boys and boys' point of view and for their benefit, so we continue the same, the same um, routine or the same uh, path. So. You say, I can't live without her. The reason you can't, you say you can't live without her, let's just discuss it, you know, you ponder on it, see if it makes sense to you or not. It's, uh, I can't live without her. Isn't it because when you were together, you thought that you were actually living for her? So now you think and you say, I can't live without her. Isn't it all in here? Isn't it because you convinced yourself that your girlfriend is the reason for everything that you do in life, or at least you wanted to have this perception by the others or by your girlfriend, or by in your own mind, to see yourself in a light that you would be feeling it's in line with the expectations of the society and the brainwash that you've been done on, the conditioning that you've been having in the society and tribe and nations and customs and so on that you've been living, whether it's influenced by the religion that you um, believe in or follow, or whether it's the uh, it's customs and conditionings of the uh, um, society and the tribe that you belong to. I say tribe because it has a deep root. Otherwise, we know they're <laughs> from some country. But you somehow convinced yourself or you wanted it to be as if you are truly, in fact, Living for her, suddenly you get credibility. I am a man dedicated to my family, my girlfriend, my wife. Oh. So you suddenly give this position or this, 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 this elated little uh, platform that you put yourself on it in your own mind according to what you think describes a member of the society that you belong to in the highest stage. You know what the society expects and what that tradition and custom expects. Whether you abide by it or you follow it or in reality or not, that's a different story. But you do want them to think that you are actually following that belief of the society that a good man is the man or a higher echelon of him, uh, nobility or higher echelon of, uh, of righteousness is the one who does or others believe that he does everything for his wife. You know, <laughs> can, you, can you just go deep into what I'm trying to say? It's not supposed to be comedy, believe me. But... <laughs> <laughs> because it's all in here you convince yourself that you are doing everything for your wife so you suddenly become more valuable in your own mind about yourself lo and behold that you keep doing this for a while and you actually believe it so when your wife or your girlfriend leaves you actually think 
what you were living for has left so you can't live without her anymore because you did a number on yourself by some bullshit thought whether it was the uh, conditioning of the society which obviously it was or somehow you had thought that a righteous man or really you know it egoistic the one who can really have a bigger ego than the other ones and justify his presence and justify his own bad manners or his expectations or his dissatisfaction or whatever it is that is happening in his life to justify it he wants everybody else and including himself to think that he's doing everything for somebody else than himself and he wants everybody to know that including himself in here so when the break, the relationship breaks up and it doesn't work he actually has bought into the fact that i was living for her now she's not there i can't live with it i can't live i can't live without her which of course we all you know we all do but you know it's just a feeling that you feel like oh then everything has come to an end so you go through this terrible pain and discomfort and missing and all that and so forth it's worth pondering that it it's all conditioned it's all in here because really at the very moment that you're sad you can actually change it when i was a kid <laughs> actually i remember that for some reason whether it was i don't know what happened maybe i was scolded or i was whatever i was crying i often happened and while i was crying tears coming here <laughs> i would go in front of the mirror and say to myself right in here say let's see how powerful i am let's see if i can in the middle of my cry smile and sure enough in the middle of <laughs> tears coming say, <laughs> and totally the whole mood would have changed until I allowed to cry again <laughs> which which <laughs> should this is a first hand experience this actually tells you that you monitor you command you regulate everything here but some of the things that you actually don't want to get out of it because you think if you stop crying or if you stop being sad that your girlfriend left it's a sin it's a disrespect you think it's a disrespect to her but actually you may think it's a disrespect to the thought that you had about your relationship with her and because you want to justify your sadness and misery and give it more of a value or justification to it you actually believe that it is a sin now because it's a disrespect to that relationship if I am not sad, if I don't mourn for it, if I don't be totally devastated. Which it's of course bullshit because you created that in here and immediately you can just say, okay, I can see what happened. Okay, now I go on. You can change it. Just like when someone close to you passes away and you, you know, you were, you were close to them or you respect them or you love them. Uh, whether it's you know mother father uncle whatever it is and you know you got other things to do and you you know maybe you've got the job to do you got to go to attend to some matter or you got a game that you wanted to participate in or your norm or your your order or your routine or whatever it was but you kind of you know that you can do it but you can't let yourself like you think it's a disrespect it's unjust it's unfair it's selfish of me it means I'm of no good character if I actually go and attend to that matter go and do my job go and you know play that game because we're supposed to be mourning we're, we're taught we're taught ever since childhood conditioning of the society partly has been that you have to mourn for something otherwise truthfully you know that when somebody dies or something happens there's not a shit that we can do about it and we know it doesn't bring that person back but we do get sad well of course i understand that you know nobody's a robot it's all emotions and we all have that and we all out of love and missing and so on and so forth we do that but but i'm trying to get a get a point across to you that even so you can command that moment and not to and pay attention to something else it's all about attention what you pay attention becomes a reality of you 
And so you're convinced, and it's all in here, that I have to be sad because my girlfriend has left. And the other thing is that you can't get over her because you think she was perfect. Even though you had fights and arguments and so on all the time, but you think she was perfect. Or somehow you actually did think she was perfect. And then you're surprised when you find out that she's not. And you just go crazy. How can I believe? How could she do that? What do you mean? What did you think she was? She was another human being with the same needs as you. Why would you have thought of her as something other than what really she was? The limits of what a human being can be. Or stand for you loved her you worshipped her right what else have you learned to worship ever since we were kids in every society in thousand years ago two thousand years ago they were worshiping statue they would make it in their own basement and bring it out and then worship it and ask for forgiveness or ask for uh, you know goodies <laughs> whatever wishes they had to be healed or to you know the harvest go well or you know whatever but it was their own making but they would worship it and because they were worshiping it that given bestowed upon this thing that this is holy and i have to worship it and i must bring that emotion of worshipness and that whatever it is that i feel about it truthfully feel that way about it therefore because i worship it it is perfect because how would I worship something that is not perfect? So because I worship it, it must be perfect. So if it's perfect, then I put it in here. I have said, dub the perfect, so it must be perfect. So the same thing you do to your girlfriend. You worship her as if she is the reason for your life, as we just talked about, as she is the reason for your worth. And that's how you think, because ever since childhood, woman has created, has, it's been created in your mind that woman is something so wonderfully special, and of course it is. And therefore, you now decided that you worship your girlfriend. When you worship your girlfriend, what else do you, are you doing to yourself? Then you're believing that what you're worshiping must be perfect. So you've already believed that it's perfect. That's why you're worshiping it. You worship it, so therefore it must be perfect. That's the way it goes. And because then it's perfect, when she leaves, you think it's something perfect has left. So you're totally fucked up. Because you had convinced yourself that it was perfect because you were worshipping her. You thought you should worship her because she's everything. She's what gives you or makes you who you are. Right? So, if you contemplate on these little bits that I just told you about, then you may actually actually see why you get so devastated it's all in here you have convinced yourself that you should be devastated because you've actually lost something that is irreplaceable regardless of the fact that it's sad and you don't want to replace it but there are other wonderful women out there and wonderful partners and you know lady wonderful boyfriends out there for you wonderful of both uh, you know, types, man, woman, they're all out there. So, when there are wonderful partners out there, what is it that you must think that that was the only one possible? And when you have all these beliefs that you have caused them in here, and you can quickly say, no, uh, it's not. I don't, it's not. There are other ones. And it's not a sin if, I'm, if I don't be sad. If it's not a sin if I go on and find another one. It's okay, I can see it. It didn't work, so what? And she's great, I respect her, love her. I mean, that's what we should do. We should respect the girlfriend, love her, be kind, be nice, be fair. And the same thing she would do, you know, for you, to you. It goes both ways. But if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. So ponder on it a little bit and see if that will help you to understand that you don't have to be sad. You don't have to be devastated. You don't have to think that, you know, uh, you can't live without her. You don't have to do these things. There is no reason for you to keep the same belief that you created in your mind to keep it in there. Just as you created, uncreated. <laughs> and start on something new. 
Hope uh, you will ponder on this and maybe enjoy thinking about it. And I'll talk to you soon.